Didn't think transport operations could be Avengers Endgame levels of epic? Think again. Large-scale transport operations can be a hugely complex jigsaw puzzle that requires more brain power than a Mensa convention on Adderall. And if you go wrong, well, then things get really serious really fast. Let us show you what we mean. These are the 20 most epic transport operations in history. Number 20. The transporting of the giant offshore Salmar's fish farm. Salmar, a Norwegian fish farming company, commissioned the construction of the Ocean Farm 1, which is one of the largest offshore fish farms in the world. To transport the semi-submersible structure, Salmar engaged the services of the shipping vessel Hua Hai Long. The vessel started its journey from the Qingdao City shipyard in China's Shandong province and traveled to Froifjorden, where it was deployed. The Ocean Farm 1 is massive in size, to say the least. Measuring 110 meters wide and 68 meters high, it is the largest offshore farm in the world. It has a volume of 250 50,000 cubic meters and can withstand magnitude 12 earthquakes. About 20,000 sensors have been installed at the marine site to monitor and feed the fish, achieving complete automation. The farm has a capacity to mature up to 1.5 million fish in just 14 months, making it one of the most productive farms in the world. Unlike traditional fish farms, the Ocean Farm 1 is equipped with a 360 degree revolving gate for cleaning fish nets and directing fish shores. The farm has also been designed to optimize the growth and well-being of the fish it houses. Salmar, the owner of the Ocean Farm 1, owns 50% of Scottish Sea Farms and secured the first development license for the project on February 28th. The eight permits granted for the Ocean Farm 1 project are limited to 780 tons of salmon and trout each for a period of seven years. Now it's time for the odd topic. A huge cargo ship is already an epic transport operation in and of itself, but this photo shows that it can be taken up to a whole other level. Because when this cargo ship ran out of bunker fuel mere moments away from reaching shore, a new plan had to be thrown together faster than a legal case for Ezra Miller. Side note, but who doesn't make sure that a cargo ship in the midst of a delivery has enough bunker fuel? Come on. The team in charge of arranging the ship got to planning and organized for a fleet of helicopters to swoop and literally pick the ship up and carry it the rest of the way. Isn't that incredible? The planning and coordination involved must have been harder than Ben Grimm's skin. Kudos to that team, truly. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag OddTopic. Number 19. Magnet. A 50-foot-wide, 15-ton magnet is set to embark on a 3,200-mile journey along the east coast of the United States, around Florida, and up from the Gulf of Chicago. The magnet, currently at the Department of Energy's Brookhaven National Laboratory, is designed to measure subatomic particles known as muons which exists for only 2.2 millionths of a second. How's that for a short life expectancy? The magnet creates a magnetic field 300,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field, but is fragile enough that the coil it contains can't bend more than a tenth of an inch to maintain its precision. The magnet will be safely transported by barge and truck with a speed of around 5 miles an hour on the road to ensure safety. Once in the suburbs of Chicago, the magnet will be part of an experiment that measures the G2 of muon, which is used as a baseline in nearly every physics theory. The objective of the experiment is to achieve a precision of 140 parts per billionth, equivalent to measuring the length of a football field to a precision of one-tenth the thickness of a human hair. The current measurement is already highly precise, and this experiment aims to find a value four times more accurate than the current measurement. If the value is substantially different, it could usher in a new era of particle Physics. Isn't that exciting? Okay, maybe not. Number 18. Space Shuttle Endeavor. 
The Space Shuttle Endeavour was a remarkable piece of technology that was built to explore the outer reaches of space. It flew its last mission in 2011 and was retired shortly thereafter. The task of transporting the massive shuttle to its final resting place at the California Science Center was a major undertaking that required a two-day crawl through the streets of Los Angeles. The process needed the shuttle to be carefully maneuvered through city streets and also the removal of hundreds of trees and the diversion of power lines. Despite the many any challenges that were faced during the transport of the shuttle, the operation was a resounding success. The people of Los Angeles lined the streets to watch as the Endeavour was slowly brought to its new home, and the excitement was palpable. The two-day crawl highlighted the importance of the shuttle's contribution to space exploration, and it was a fitting tribute to a truly iconic piece of technology. The Space Shuttle Endeavour has had a long and storied life, having flown 25 space missions over the course of 20 years. Its contributions to our understanding of the universe are immeasurable, and will always be remembered as one of the greatest achievements of human engineering. Number 17. Abu Simbel Temple the rescue and relocation of the Abu Simbel temples is considered one of the greatest feats of archaeological engineering in history. In the early 1960s, the construction of the Aswan High Dam and Lake Nasir in southern Egypt posed a significant threat to the spectacular temples, which date back to the region of Pharaoh Ramses II in the 13th century BCE. With the support of UNESCO, a multinational team of archaeologists, engineers, and skilled heavy equipment operators began working together in 1964 to salvage the temples and move them to a new location before the water would reach them and damage them irreparably. The project was a massive undertaking that lasted from 1964 to 1968 and cost around $40 million at the time, equivalent to $300 million in 2017 dollars. The entire site was carefully cut into large blocks, some weighing up to 30 tons, and moved to a new location on higher ground about 200 meters back from the river. It was a delicate and complicated process that required precision and expertise, but the team was successful in preserving the temples and their beautiful intricate carvings. Today, the temples continue to attract visitors from all over the world, providing a glimpse into the rich history and culture of ancient Egypt. Number 16. James Webb Telescope the James Webb Space Telescope is a groundbreaking scientific instrument which was set to launch into space in late 2021. This space telescope is deemed the successor to the Hubble Space Telescope and is expected to advance scientific research in many ways. The JWST is capable of observing the universe with great detail and accuracy, providing NASA astronomers and scientists with an invaluable tool to learn more about our universe. The shipping process of the James Webb Telescope towards French Guiana was a Herculean task aimed at ensuring that the telescope reaches its final location safely and securely. French Guiana was chosen for the telescope's launch site due to its proximity to the equator and good launch infrastructure, which makes missions less expensive. Transporting the telescope to French Guiana began with its delicate packing and transfer to the port of Houston, Texas. Then it was loaded on a container ship and traveled through the Panama Canal, heading to the ports of Kourou, French Guiana. A specifically designed shipping container was used to transport the telescope, which had to withstand rigorous environmental and weather the conditions during the journey. NASA engineers closely monitored the entire transportation process to ensure that the James Webb Space Telescope would arrive at its destination unscathed. The world awaits with bated breath for the much-anticipated new scientific discoveries that it will bring. Number 15. The Super Guppy the Super Guppy is a unique aircraft that has played a vital role in NASA's space missions. And yes, it's also one weird-looking plane. Unlike the other spaceships that have been launched into space, the Super Guppy has never actually been to space. However, it has a long history of helping NASA get there. This odd-looking, oversized aircraft has been used to transport essential components of the Gemini, Apollo, and Skylab missions, and more recently, played a role in the construction of the International Space Station. Not bad, huh? 
the Super Guppy was built from parts of Boeing 377 Strato Cruiser, including the wings, engines, lower fuselage, and tail. With its bulbous fuselage, the Super Guppy is one of the most peculiar aircrafts in the world. Its unique shape and size enable it to carry large and heavy payloads. In fact, it has a payload capacity of 54,500 pounds and can reach a maximum speed of 460 miles an hour. NASA has modified the Super Guppy to transport oversized cargo such as rocket stages and spacecraft components. It has a hinged nose that opens up to allow the loading of the cargo and the cargo is loaded onto the aircraft through the Guppy spacious cargo hold. Even if it looks out of the ordinary, this remarkable aircraft has served NASA well over the years, carrying out countless missions with precision and reliability and is a testament to NASA's ingenuity and resourcefulness. Number 14. Transportation of the world's largest evaporator, Dongbang Transport Logistics set world record. Dongbang Transport Logistics, based in Seoul, Korea, has made history by transporting the world's largest evaporator to the Yangbu 3 desalination project in Saudi Arabia. The evaporator is an integral part of the desalination process, which converts seawater into drinking water. The evaporator measures 137.9 meters in length, 32.1 meters in width, and 11.4 meters in height, and weighs a staggering 5,736.8 tons. To transport this massive piece of equipment, Dongbang uses a total of 125 axles and 25 pairs of remote-controlled self-propelled modular transporters. The transportation of the evaporator by Dongbang sets a new world record according to the World Record Academy. The complex project was completed successfully with the help of advanced technologies and innovative solutions that allowed for the safe and efficient transportation of the evaporator. Dongbang's expertise and experience in heavy transportation played a crucial role in this project, demonstrating the company's commitment to providing high-quality logistics solutions to its clients. The Yanbu 3 desalination project is a major initiative aimed at addressing the growing water demand in Saudi Arabia. The project is expected to produce over 450,000 cubic meters of desalinated water per day, helping to meet the needs of over a million people. Dongbang's successful transportation of the evaporator is a major milestone in the project's development, showcasing the capabilities of the logistics industry in tackling complex challenges and pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Number 13. Nuclear Reactor in the summer of 2019, a massive shipment weighing it in at 770 tons began its seven-week journey from the San Onofre nuclear power plant. The shipment was an old but vital piece of equipment that needed to be transported to a nuclear waste repository for storage. The project to transport this bulky and heavy equipment was a Herculean task that required a lot of planning and coordination. The journey began at the power plant, where the equipment was carefully loaded onto a specialized trailer. The transportation company then began the long journey across California to the destination site, which was located hundreds of miles away. The journey was slow and steady, with the trailer moving at maximum speed of just a few miles per hour. The operators of the hauling vehicle had to ensure that the shipment stayed upright through the entire journey, which included navigating hills, tunnels, and bridges. As the shipment moved closer to the storage site, the transportation team faced additional challenges of navigating tight passages and twisting rods. However, after seven long weeks, the equipment finally arrived safely at its destination. This monumental task was completed without any accidents or mishaps, which is a testament to the expertise and dedication of the transport team. Number 12. Nuclear Waste the state of Nevada is preparing to handle the transportation of radioactive waste from nuclear weapons development in the next few years. However, the United States has struggled to find suitable ways to dispose of nuclear waste, seeing as it kind of sticks around for tens of thousands of years. The Waste Isolation Pilot Plant in New Mexico is the only facility dedicated to the permanent disposal of nuclear waste in the country. 
It accepts waste generated from Department of Energy Defense activities and is licensed to receive clothing and equipment contaminated with radioactive elements. Before transportation to WIPP, nuclear waste is packaged in drums at DOE facilities such as national labs or nuclear weapons production facilities. These drums are designed to contain radiation and are transported to WIPP by special trucks. The drums are placed inside larger containers called overpacks that are then permanently stored in rooms over 2,000 feet below ground. The issue of nuclear waste disposal is a pressing problem that requires a comprehensive and sustainable strategy. The nuclear industry and government agencies responsible for nuclear weapons production and energy generation must prioritize the development of long-term solutions that safeguard public health and minimize risks of environmental contamination. Effective communication with the public and stakeholders is also crucial to developing and implementing successful strategies for radioactive waste management. Number 11. Helicopter Picking Up Power Line Tower the Department of Energy has released a video showcasing a sky crane helicopter lifting a transmission line tower into place near Roosevelt, Washington. Yes, you heard that right. It is an illustration of the challenges posed in laying miles of new transmission lines across vast distances. The transmission line, McNary John Day, will enable hundreds of megawatts of wind energy to be transported across the state. Despite the rewarding results of such an undertaking, the process is not only time-consuming, but it's also quite expensive. Laying 30 miles of transmission line requires months of work and substantial investment. If the US is to harness its wind resource fully, it will take more than a few miles of the new high-voltage transmission lines to achieve this goal. A report by the Senate Democratic Policy Committee states that the typical cost per mile for transmission is between $1.5 and $2 million. However, underwater or underground lines can cost significantly more. The research predicts that, to keep up with demand from 2010 to 2030, national investment in transmission infrastructure will need to reach $300 billion. To provide 20% of the country's electricity from wind resources, it is estimated that $60 billion will be needed by 2030. The private sector is unlikely to make the necessary infrastructure investment, and the government has only invested meager funds recently. Number 10. The Levitated Mass Michael Heiser is a renowned American sculptor known for his ambitious and monumental works of art. One of his most famous creations is the Levitated Mass, a 340-ton granite boulder that he moved across Los Angeles to create a unique and compelling sculpture. The sculpture is an awe-inspiring sight that captures the imagination and creates a sense of wonder and mystery. The large boulder is suspended above a concrete trench, creating the illusion that it is floating above the ground. The Levitated Mass is a a powerful symbol that represents man's relationship with nature and the struggle to harness and control it. The project was a gigantic effort, almost as big as the boulder, that required the hard work and dedication of dozens of workers and engineers, as well as the financial backing of wealthy donors. Heiser's vision, skill, and determination were also critical to the success of the project, which took over 40 years to complete. Heiser's work has been heavily influenced by his upbringing amidst the vast and rugged landscape of the American West. He has always been interested in exploring the intersection between art and nature, and his work often involves large, earth-moving machinery and elements of the natural world. The Levitated Mass is a perfect example of this, as it connects the monumental scale of the boulder with the precision and engineering of a massive construction project. Number 9. Crane Assembly Manitowoc 999 have you ever wondered how they get those immense cranes we often see to the construction sites? Well, it's no small operation, I can say that much. The transportation of a large crane, such as the Manitowoc 999 crane, can be a fascinating and complex project. Disassembling and reassembling a crane requires a large number of trucks to move its various components, necessitating careful planning to ensure that each trailer carries the correct pieces. Shipping a crane requires a variety of trailer types, such as flatbeds, step decks, double drops, and multi-axle trailers to accommodate different components and maximize load capacity.
During a recent crane transport project, a step deck trailer was used to transport a boom section with two counterweights, allowing the load to be maximized without exceeding weight and dimension limits. Another important consideration in crane transportation is trailer height, as long and high components require low profile wheels and cutouts to reduce deck height and ensure compliance with overall height restrictions. The biggest challenge in the project was transporting the Manitowoc 999 crane body itself, which weighed 87,500 pounds and needed an 8-axle RGN trailer. Permits were also necessary for the crane's 9 foot 10 width and 80 foot plus length in certain states. To successfully move cranes of this size and complexity, careful planning and coordination between transport teams is not just advisable, but essential. Number 8. The longest train in the world in the Sahara Desert. Recently, rare footage of a very remote transit line dubbed the world's most extreme railway has surfaced and it looks like something straight out of a Mad Max film. The Mauritania Railway, located in the Sahara Desert, is an extraordinary feat of engineering, where trains as long as 2.9 kilometers haul more than 22 tons of iron ore across the desert. The railway has been in operation since 1963 and is the only way to travel across the desert, providing locals with access to distant places, family, and work. National Geographic has recently released a short film that showcases the journey, filled with dust storms, wild winds, and temperatures that exceed 40 degrees Celsius, making it a difficult journey, taking up to 54 hours to complete. For many Mauritanians, the railway is the only option for transportation. The train carries essentials such as water, fuel, and food to remote villages along the way, and, at times, people themselves, braving the elements on their free one-way ticket. It's a surreal scene, the mammoth trains seemingly stretch out to infinity, a blur of iron and desert, making you wonder how it's even possible for such a heavy and spread out load to move. However, the railway isn't without its dangers, and unfortunate accidents are not uncommon when passengers or cargo fall off the train. Yet, it remains the most practical means of transportation in the region, and the sight of the train chugging along is a symbol of hope, endurance, and resilience amidst the harsh conditions of the Sahara. Number 7. Wind Turbine Blade Weighing 19 Tons Carried Up Mountain Historically, transporting wind turbine blades has always been a challenging task due to their increasing size and weight over time, combined with the fact that most wind farms are located in remote and difficult to reach areas. Because of the importance of reducing the environmental impact of this transport, an innovative blade lifter technology was developed to take advantage of the inclination of the blades and make it possible to transport them more easily. A typical wind turbine has three blades rotating around a horizontal axis, each blade ranging in length from 5 to well over 100 meters and weighing several tens of tons. With most wind farms consisting of more than 100 wind turbines, the task of transporting these massive structures to their intended locations is no easy feat. To solve this challenge, blade lifter technology enables the easy transportation of wind turbine blades. By means of a mechanism, usually a hydraulic lift, the blade is raised, reaching an inclination of around 65 degrees or even rotated to avoid the sail effect of the wind, making it simpler and safer to drive on narrow and sharp roads. The mechanism is installed behind the tractor head and can rotate and lift the blade in the vertical plane, always securing the base of the blade. The transport is carried out using a trailer with at least 10 axles, making it possible to maneuver the blade through both rural and even urban environments. Number 6. The Didcot Power Station Transformer in 2013, a sensitive and intricate operation was successfully carried out to transport a massive 637-ton load from Didcot Power Station to Avonmouth Docks, located around the UK's highly congested road networks. The journey spanned over 80 miles, and the load measured a staggering 294 feet, or 89 meters long, making it one of the largest ever roads to be transported in the UK.
The transportation was carefully planned over several weeks and involved the combined efforts and expertise of a highly skilled team, including a transport company, police escort system, and other specialized professionals. The process involved disassembling the load into five different parts and carefully transporting each section into its destination. A variety of specialized equipment, such as hydraulic trailers and cranes, were used to maneuver and support the massive load throughout the journey. The operation was carried out with extreme caution and precision, with the police escort team working tirelessly to ensure that the load, the public, and the transportation infrastructure were kept safe throughout the journey. The successful completion of this project highlights the ingenuity and technical expertise of the UK's transportation industry and is a significant milestone for heavy load transportation in the country. Number 5. Crawler Transporter the two incredible crawler transporters that have been taking rockets and spacecraft to the launch pad for more than 50 years are an engineering marvel. These massive machines were specifically designed for the sole purpose of transporting the large and heavy spacecraft and rockets around the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The two crawler transporters are nicknamed Hans and Franz and are the largest self-powered land vehicles in the world. With an incredible length of 132 feet, a width of 114 feet, and a height of 20 feet, they weigh an astounding 6.6 .6 million pounds when completely loaded. The crawlers work by utilizing a combination of electric motors, hydraulic systems, and sophisticated software. They are equipped with DOR flasks that contain liquid nitrogen to keep the crawlers cool and a regenerative braking system to help control their speed. The transporters can support up to 18 million pounds while moving and have a speed of up to 2 miles per hour. The crawler transporters are an essential part of NASA's space program and they have played a vital role in the launching of some of the most iconic space missions in history. The crawlers have transported every Saturn V rocket that has been launched, including those that carried the Apollo missions to the moon. They were also instrumental in carrying the space shuttle to the launch pad. The crawler transporters are an engineering masterpiece and they will undoubtedly go down in history for their enormous size and unique capabilities. Number 4. Bullwinkle Oil Platform the Bullwinkle oil platform was one of the largest man-made structures ever constructed at the time of its completion in 1988. It was operated by Shell Oil Company and was located approximately 150 miles south of New Orleans in the Gulf of Mexico. Standing at an impressive height of over 1,700 feet, it remained the tallest structure in the world until the construction of the Burj Khalifa in 2010. The immense structure was so large that it had to be transported to the installation site in multiple sections. The individual sections were then assembled on location using large cranes and construction equipment. To keep the structure stable in the rough waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the platform was built to withstand winds of up to 140 miles an hour and waves as high as 200 feet. The Bullwinkle platform was capable of drilling in water depths of up to 1,732 feet and had a production capacity of up to 53,400 barrels of oil oil per day. It was designed to withstand extreme weather conditions such as hurricanes and was equipped with safety features such as life rafts, emergency response teams, and personal protective equipment. Despite its impressive size and capabilities, the Bullwinkle platform was eventually decommissioned in 2002 due to declining oil reserves in the Gulf of Mexico. Today, the platform remains standing as a symbol of human innovation and engineering prowess. Number 3. Asta Hansen Spa. Dockwise, a subsidiary company of Royal Buscalis Westminster, transported the newly built spa hull of the Statoil Asta Hanstein project from the Hyundai Heavy Industries Fabrication Yard in Olsen, South Korea, to the offshore discharge location near Hoyansbeekt, Norway. The spa hull is the largest ever built, making it a remarkable feat of engineering. On April 26, 2017, the Asta Hanstein Spa began its journey on the Dockwise Vanguard Heavy Transport Vessel, which 
which covered a distance of approximately 14,500 nautical miles off the course of two months. Once the hull arrived in Norway, it was floated off and the topsides, weighing 25,000 tons, were mated via a process known as a catamaran floatover later in the year. After undergoing commissioning work, the spar was towed into the Norwegian Sea, where it was moored at the Asta Hanstein Field. The Asta Hanstein development was an ambitious project led by Statoil, which moves Norwegian offshore operations into a new deep water environment. The spar is moored in the Norwegian Sea at a depth of 1,300 meters, a considerable increase from the previous record of 900 meters set by Shell's Orman Lang development. This move marks a monumental step towards advancing the offshore industry's capabilities and pushing the limits of what is possible with new technologies and techniques. Number 2. Big Merino in the early 1990s, the construction of the Humi Highway bypassed Goldburn, resulting in a decrease in visitation to the Big Merino, one of the city's most well-known landmarks. In response, a consortium of local businesses who recognized the importance of the Big Merino to the community and the local economy, they understood that taking action to preserve it was essential. So, they decided to take action and move the iconic statue down the road by about a kilometer. The operation to move the Big Merino was a significant undertaking that required careful planning and execution. Engineers and contractors had to plan the move, which included dismantling the statue, relocating it, and reassembling it, piece by piece. The process was completed successfully, and the statue now stands in a highly visible location where it can be seen by all who pass by. In short, the move of the Big Merino was a community effort that involved collaboration, planning, and execution. Number 1. Petrochemical Splitter the safe delivery of the 1400T C3 splitter column to the new Borealis propane dehydrogenation site in Calo, Belgium, is a significant achievement in the construction of one of the world's largest and most efficient PDH plants. This marks the first major milestone during the plant's two-year construction phase, the transportation and installation contract for the site's 35 heaviest pieces of equipment was awarded to Mamoet by Borealis and Technomont. The plant's engineering, procurement, and construction management partner, citing Mamoet's expertise in delivering end-to-end -end solutions for projects of this scale. Mamoet's team of experienced engineers and field workers collaborated with Borealis to devise the most efficient delivery timetable for the splitter. The quay was developed for a loadout four days before the transportation date. The splitter, which arrived on a barge from Spain, was successfully delivered after the barge was equipped with ballast pumps and winches. As you can see, it doesn't matter how big it is. A team of engineers somewhere is already working on how to transport it. What about you, though? If you could choose to watch, in person, one of these Herculean transport operations, which would you choose and why? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. We'll see you next time then, folks. This is Jake the Voice Pass signing off. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.